Social Security payments buy 34% less today than they did 18 years ago in the year 2000. So think about that. For $1,000 you received in Social Security in 2000, the year 2000, that could buy $1,000 worth of goods, that same dollar, even with the cost of living adjustments adjusted for inflation, will buy only $660 worth of goods today. That's inflation, my friends. That's how dastardly inflation can affect you and your time of planning. So welcome to Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, my friends, the place you come to learn about Social Security, inflation, and everything else financial planning under the sun. I do a video a day, at least a video a day. So don't forget to subscribe. Hit that little button. Ooh, let me get this out of the way. That little button down below. And then once you subscribe, you want to hit the bell to be notified for future content because, like I said, I do a lot of videos. So let me minimize myself here. Um, this is, I, I subscribe to a thing called the Horse's Mouth Savvy Social Security Planning. Uh, it's just a wonderful uh, just place to get all kinds of great articles to read about what's going on in the world of uh, financial planning, Social Security. There's also one for Medicare, which I subscribe to as well. And uh, this is, this article I got from, uh, from Social Security or from Savvy Social Security Planning at Horse'sMouth.com comes directly from uh, CBC, uh, CNBC. So let's just dive over there real quick. And we're going to read this to you because this is critical, my friends. This is critical. Social Security benefits by 34% less than a 2000 uh, study shows. If you feel like your Social Security check doesn't stretch as far as it once did, there's likely an explanation for that. Since 2000, the buying power of monthly benefits has fallen by a third, a little bit more than a third, according to the Senior Citizens League, an advocacy group out of uh, Alexander, Virginia. I'm sure they're advocating for increases in Social Security. Um, that's what they're advocating for, rightly or wrongly. That's a lobbying group. Nothing inherently wrong with that, but uh, you know they're <laughs> they're lobbying on behalf of their members to increase Social Security benefits. Uh, the one thing they're going to do is focus on the negatives of not increasing Social Security benefits, and one of the negatives would be uh, thirty four percent less purchasing power than it was eighteen years ago. And so here's uh, Mary Johnson, who's an analyst for the League, says people who recently retired may have seen only a small decrease in buying power. But those who retire for a long time are feeling a cumulative effect of this. About 47 million older Americans receive Social Security. Overall, those benefits comprise about a third of income among those aged 65 or older. That's according to the SSA, the Social Security Administration. The league's annual report examines the costs that typically comprise household budgets of older Americans and compare the price changes with the annual cost of living adjustments that Social Security provides. Uh, based on those comparisons, the research found a 4% loss in Social Security buying power from January 17th to January 2018 and a 34% increase since 2000. So again, a 4% reduction in purchasing power each and every year, essentially, since, the, uh, for, since 18 years ago. Well, even that's even with the cost of living adjustments. That's freaking scary, man. So if they're giving you 2% a year of COLA or 2.6 is what we're anticipating, and the cost of living is going by 4%, you're losing 1.4% per year in real purchasing power. You fast forward that over 15, 20 years, that's real money. While COLA increases since 2000 cumulatively have equal 46%, matching inflation over those years, typical retiree expenses grew by 96.3%, says the study. Of those 39 costs analyzed in the report, 26% grew faster than the purchase percentage increase in COLA's uh, from 2000 to 2018. So here, right here, Medicare Part B premiums, right there, has grown by 145, 190, grown by 195 percent. Prescription drugs out of pocket, 188 percent. Home heating oil has grown by 180 uh, percent. Medigap, right. <sighs> 158 percent. Propane, real estate taxes. So in fact, the real estate taxes are my big bugaboo, actually. Um, and so that's grown by 129 percent, whereas they say uh, inflation has grown by 46 percent in 2000. You're not getting around Part B monthly premiums. I suppose you have a uh, Medicare Advantage policy. Do they pay the Part B premiums? I can't remember. But if you have a Medicare Advantage policy, that might help you. But then you're kind of eh, restricted in some regard. Uh, prescription drugs, will Part D cover that? Well, if you're up against a donut hole, then you're going to eat the bulk of that. Home heating, if you got to heat your home. I shouldn't say anything about solar PV panels, uh, photovoltaic panels, but uh, I'll keep that for another thing. You got to heat your home. And if you're thinking solar panels are going to do it, you're wrong. That's just all there is to it. 
Um, am I anti-solar? No, I have solar panels. I like them, but they're not going to be there for heating a home. It's just not going to happen. Metagap, all right, you're part F, part G. Uh, real estate taxes and propane gas. So you got home heating oil and propane. Housing and medical outlays top the list of fastest growing expenses that retirees face. For example, average Part B premiums have risen 195 percent from to 134 from 45 and 2000. That's 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 real money. It's not a pretty picture, says Mary Johnson. It's difficult costs when costs are so increasing much more uh, quickly than coals, especially if you're on a fixed income. Johnson said the report uses 2000 as a baseline because that's when changes to how inflation is measured were fully implemented. Social Security adjustments, uh, cost of living adjustments are based on the measure called the Consumer Price Index for Urban Wage Earners and Clerical Workers. Critics say that formula fails to consider the different spending patterns for retirees compared with the U.S. population at large. Could not agree with that more. Um, and they, uh, the Senior Citizens League have a thing called the Consumer Price Index for the Elderly. I Man, I could not agree with that more. Since 2010, the average COLA for Social Security has been 1.2%. Uh, most recently, there was a COLA, no COLA in 2016 uh, and 0.3% in 2017, while 2018, we've had the biggest boost in a while. Uh, but most retirees saw all that money going to Part B premiums. Uh, Johnson estimates that the COLA for 2019 will at least be 3.3%, which could help mute some of the loss of the buying power year over year. Yeah, some of the loss. Uh, but... I mean, I'm sorry. If you're looking, well, do I get my trusty calculator? Yes, I do. All right, so let's see here. Medicare Part B premium. So if you got 45 is our present value, 134 is our future value. You got 18 years. Uh, my phone's ringing. Sorry, guys. And no payment. That means that has grown. Oops. 45 present value. That's grown by 6.2% a year. All right, 6.2% a year in Medicare Part B. Uh, let's just look at uh, propane. We start with a buck, 1.01 is our present value. Right there. And we got, uh, let's see, 2.60 is our future value, 18 years. That's 5.4%. So you give me 3.3% all day long. That's fantastic. I'm not going to argue with that. But if this right here is growing much more quickly than that, that's not gonna that's not gonna help. Now they do have this hold harmless and all that stuff. I get all that, but at the end of the day, they're not gonna hold you harmless for heating oil, propane gas, real estate taxes. Where does the money come from if you're on fixed income? Now on top of that, if you're pulling money out of your IRA to pay for this, you gotta pay tax on that. <sighs> all right, so just you got I, I tell you, this is a big deal. This is inflation. And if you think about it, when I was a kid growing up in Maine, was that 1978 or 79? Um, I remember I got my first, I had like 25 cents. I could go down to the store and buy a, a can of soda. I could buy penny candy, a whole bunch of a handful of penny candy. That 25 cents today, you can't do that. That's inflation. That's inflation. Inflation is the biggest, biggest tax there is for the most unwary. Because they say, oh, well, I'm not losing money. You are losing money. Inflation is eating away at your assets. And if inflation is at 2.6, which is, let's just say it is, because that's roughly what it is, and your investment portfolio is making you 2.6, you're breaking even, but you're paying taxes on that inflation. Because after taxes and inflation, you're still, so uh, again, you got you get 2.6, got $100,000 in your account. You need, that $100,000 is gonna grow by 2.6. So you have 102,600 in a year, all right? Now, you could buy this cup for $100,000, let's just say. Next year, this cup will cost $102,600, $2,600 more. But that $2,600, you got to pay tax on. You're paying tax, let's just say, in a 15% tax bracket. That means you're only going to have $2,200. You're going to have to pay five, uh, $2,200. So you, lot, you lose $400. So now I can't buy this cup with my $102,000 because I, get a, I have $102,000 thousand two hundred ten dollars but this cup cost this cup costs one hundred two thousand six hundred that's inflation right there even though my investments perform at the rate of inflation i was taxed on them and inherently i lost money i can no longer buy this cup yeah <sighs> anyway so you just you, you can't just rely on your rate of return equaling the rate of inflation you gotta look at your rate of return plus taxes and you gotta do better than that you just you got to that's all there is to it so i would need uh, so we got point uh, two point six plus one point. Uh, I would need to get two point six. I need to get fifteen percent above that. Two point six times. I need to get three percent return 
to get uh, to break even after taxes inflation. Ugh. You got to keep that in the back of your mind, my friends. It's uh, it's dastardly inflation. It's dastardly. And even though it's low, well, look at it right here. It's low on some things, but it's not low on others. That's for sure. I mean, that's heating oil. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Hope you find this informative. The solutions are, unfortunately, is that you got to have some kind of investments that can beat the rate of inflation. That's all there is to it, plus taxes. Uh, don't forget to subscribe down below. Hit the uh, hit the, uh, the notification bell to be notified for future content. Man, just, ah, this frustrates me because I know that I know I can see people right now who I, I know I know who they are. They're on fixed income. They got to pull money out to pay for the real estate tax. That money they got pulled out is being taxed. They're not keeping up with the cost of living and, uh, and they're burning through their assets. And it's just bad. All right. Anyway, so we'll see you next time. Don't forget to comment below. Go to the blog at heritagewealthplanning.com. And, uh, and we'll have, uh, we'll, we'll keep talking. I'm just going to bring you the news. And if uh, the news is bad, I'm going to share it with you. When it's good, I'll share it with you too. So we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.